Hi, and welcome to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to give you my first impressions of Berger Pancro 400. Let's get into it. Throughout the pandemic, I bought quite a lot of different kinds of film that I salted away in my freezer um, to try and um, experiment and see what I liked and what I didn't like of the films currently available on the market. And something that I kind of neglected up until this point were my rolls of Berger Pancro 400. I tried Rolly Retro, um, I tried uh, Foma of various different sorts. Um, but although the Pancro 400 had come out of the freezer and gone into the uh, gadget bag and been out with me on several shoots, I'd never actually got around to using it. Well, winter is a time for me when I go out and I shoot tests um, because, well, I can. I'm not wasting the good weather. Um, and also there were some really quite interesting weather systems and clouds and you know, it's, it's quite, it's better than just shooting in bright sun all the time. Also, I'd kind of neglected the RB67 for a while and particularly the new lens that I'd picked up for it, which was the 50 millimeter f4.5 wide angle which I think is equivalent to about a 30 millimeter on 35 millimeter full frame. So uh, I decided somewhat insanely uh, to take um, the RB67 down to my local haunt of hollow ponds and <laughs> shoot it as a walkabout camera. Now, if there's one thing that any of you who have handled an RB67 will know it's not exactly a walkabout camera but this old girl is more of a walkabout camera now because I've replaced the prism with a normal finder so that it actually folds up and is a lot lighter well yeah it's a lot lighter it's still very heavy but it's a lot lighter so I took this and I took some Berger Pancro and I went to Hollow Ponds. So let's have a look at those images. Well, the first thing I noticed, and I have to admit I was slightly gobsmacked by, was the dynamic range of the film. Wonderfully open shadows with plenty of detail in. Plenty of detail in the highlights, wonderful grey tones in between. I'm, I have to admit to being very, very surprised by this. Um, I was somewhat underwhelmed by Rolly Retro. Um, I've done reviews of Fomapan and whilst I quite like Fomapan, um, I'm not really sure about its overall quality. I was absolutely knocked out by the Berger. What you have to bear in mind here is I developed 
the Berger 400 in my normal go-to developer of Ilfotec HC. By all accounts online, Panko 400, um, because it has um, a dual layer, um, two different types of grain basically, um, works best with a pyro developer like its own Berger developer, which I obviously don't have. I've looked at the results that other people have got with the pyro, and what you see there is that wonderful range of tones, but also with very fine grain. And the only thing that I would say would put some people off the Berger if you develop it in something like Rodinol or as I did, um, Ilfotec HC, is that the grain is quite large. It's crisp and it's defined, but it is very obviously there, especially in sky areas. Now, I really quite like grain, so I'm not worried about that, but I'm very, very interested to see what will happen when I develop the burger or burger. It's very, very difficult to work out whether it's burger or burger. Um, in a pyro developer. So I will be getting some of that and I will be shooting this roll and developing it with pyro. Price wise in the UK, the Pancro 400 is on a par with Ilfa Delta 400. It's more expensive than HP5. HP5 plus that should be. I always forget to put the plus on the end. Actually, its tonal range puts it in, in my opinion, the premium filmed range. Um, I bought it and saw it initially as being um, maybe a budget film, but I really don't think it is a budget film at all. Um, it's actually a very, very capable and quite subtle film. If there's one thing I would mark it down that I really don't like is the fact that it curls like you would not believe. Luckily that curling is down the length of the film, not across the width, so it doesn't necessarily make it terribly difficult to scan, but the film strips do escape you really easily and they can curl up and fly around and um, that's one thing I really didn't like. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, admittedly it's a shorter one than usual, but if you've enjoyed it then perhaps you'll hit the like button and if you want to support the channel, perhaps you think about subscribing because as usual, that will put a great big grin on my face. Also, don't forget you can help keep the lights on with this channel by supporting me on Patreon or you can even buy me a cup of coffee. Now, I do get through coffee at a rate of knots. Anyway, until I see you again, take care and keep taking those pictures.